The what? Oh. <laughs> okay, church. The pastor says you can shop during prayer. So when you're... Now, that's not passed by the Holy Spirit. No. There's a higher authority in that. So, Lord, I had nothing to do with this decision. <laughs> yeah. I had nothing to do with that decision. My house will be called the house of prayer. There's no lightning that I see. It comes really fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just remember who said it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let's just thank the Lord tonight. This is our last prayer gathering in this facility. So, whatever that means. Praise God. I guess that means it's the last prayer meeting in this facility. So, let's introduce. I have something that... Um, that the Lord brought up from last Thursday that I think he really wants us to break through on tonight. And I've got some scriptures to go along with it, but uh, really important. So let's invite the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. We welcome you. This is an important night, Father. Uh, I don't really know why, I just know that it is. And uh, Father, we want to thank you for leading us tonight, alerting us, waking up our spirit. There's some things you want to do tonight uh, with this group. Hallelujah. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, angelic forces. We welcome you, the heavenly host. We welcome you, warrior angels. We welcome you that are in charge of our territories. We welcome you. We, 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 we assign your love and anointing on this building tonight. So I don't forget to do that, that whomever comes in here will find their way to you for the future, that you're in charge of some great things that has been sowed into this building, Lord. And we just come in agreement right now and come and apply the anointing. So as you walk today or whatever you're doing, just kind of put your hands out during prayer and just kind of touch or just kind of speak to the wall, speak to the building, speak to the hallways, apply the blood. I just sense that the Holy Spirit wants to use this place. It's been drenched with warfare prayer. It's been drenched with greatness. It's been drenched for a future. We, we, we intercede now, okay, Lord, and just do this different. Father, we intercede now for the landlord and for many of the things that he's going to be set free from, Father, from mammon, from all kinds of different battles, his concerns, sadness, grief. I don't know what it is, Father, but we just, we speak the blood over the landlords, over tenants in this building, over future tenants, over the street, we just uh, plead the blood over the churches that are a part of this whole street area, Father. In the name of Jesus, greatness, breakthroughs. We thank you that the anointing that you've placed uniquely in New Song Worship Center is not departing. That there is an excitement of growth, teaching, the gospel of Christ the right mind anointing, the breakthroughs of encounter and freedom and liberty and grace. And then, Father, you will guard this section of Costa Mesa. In the name of Jesus. So tonight, Father, we ask you, Holy Spirit, if you would just kind of tweak us and anything along this line, as you did me tonight, just tweak us. For things that we want, that you would like us to speak over the building, over the people, over this block, over Costa Mesa. Whatever, Lord, in Jesus' name. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, in the last few days, um, I've heard a lot about last week 
the glory of God, the prayer for the glory of God, the breakthrough for the glory of God. And uh, probably in the last three or four days, just heard just various people talking or however it just came on me. And the Holy Spirit kind of gave me an assignment for tonight. And uh, some scriptures, I'll see how far we get, but just to kind of share with you all. But the assignment is, he wants us to pray in containers for the glory. Containers are people. He said, I need you to call in. Kathy, if you would, uh, Romans 4. Romans 4, 17. Uh, he, he wants us to call in people that he's prepared to, that he's anointed to take the glory that he's talking about. We've called the glory in, but unless it connects with a human being, there's no, there's no way to get it out to the world. And God wants to, to show his glory in our church that is going to draw the hunger of the people that he's called Young people, young couples, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. And so the first scripture that he gave me was Romans 4, 17. And these are all scriptures that he gave me. I don't, it's, some of them might be, well, we'll just give it a shot here. I see, he did it, Father, thank you. I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead, and this is the one he wanted. He wanted you to know that what you call out tonight and believe him for, he's going to, he's going to popularize the church. He's got people ready, and he wants us to call them in. So the, you call those things that are not existing as if they did. And he's saying, you call in my warriors who have been waiting for this moment. And don't let up. So the glory is one thing. But there has to be a receiving on the glory. It has to go into a human being with his gifts and with God's power in order to be effective. And it's time for our growth and for the power of what God wants to do in this incredible season is that we have to fill the church. We have to allow God to bring in these gifts, these last gifts, the last times of the, of the deal. So, Father, we thank you for that. Hallelujah. James 1, Kathy. And this is a, what I'm doing tonight is, this is my prayer. I'm calling people in with these scriptures, so this is a prayer time. So, be in tongues, support. I'm warring with the sword of the Spirit. 122, and God said, be doers. We need doers, not hearers. Hallelujah. He told me, now you pray and you call in doers. People that are willing to take risks. People that are willing to lay some things on the line. People that are hungry in the name of Jesus. So be doers of the word and not hearers only, Father. They're ready. They're ready. He told me the parable of the, of the, the workers. Do you all remember it? I don't know where to turn on it, but the parables of the workers, Jesus said. Some were hired at 9 a.m., some were hired at 12, some at 3, some at 6. And the ones hired at 6 a.m. wanted more pay than the ones that were hired at 6 p.m. Makes sense. Jesus said, I can do anything I want with my money, but what was he trying to say? We're calling in people that have been called for this time. This is a time. That's what that parable means, that you were called, I've been called, we had a specific assignment. It hasn't always been easy because we've been breaking up fallow ground. But there are those that are called to the harvest field. 
and all over, they are the ones that come in at 6 p.m., and when pay comes, they get the full wages as if they were here since 6 a.m. And the church is going to have to train and see them and accept them, so we're calling them in. They have unique gifts, unique things for this season, for this time period. And so we call them in for the full abundance. And New Song, with love connected to knowledge, is going to be able to spot them and be able to train them and to be able to love on them and to be able to accept unique calls, unique understandings, because administrations are going to be different, people are going to be different, and you're going to have to look at them through the eye of your spirit. So, Father, we call this in. We call in the unique ones. We call the ones with anointings that haven't been seen, but yet are of you, ministries that are different that are of you. We call in a church that can see and train and love by the Spirit. Hallelujah. So it's really important as the glory comes that we, we have called in the right people, right believers. Hallelujah. Y'all still with me? Hallelujah. So pray with me on this. And tonight, as you get things about leaving the anointing here, and as you get things about calling in our future, because this is going to explode. Because there's some anointings that will be evangelists that will go out and fill your church in a day. Hallelujah, Father. And we're going to call him. We're going to yield to God in this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Would you turn to Mark 16? Another scripture, group of scriptures that God wanted. 16, 15 through 20. And this is the challenge of Mark, the end of Mark. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is going to come out of our church like you've never imagined. The complete freedom of the blood of Christ, the complete freedom of all sin has been rebuked, all death has been rebuked. The manifestation and the preaching of this gospel is going all over the city. Evangelists are coming in. Evangelists have to have a hub. It has to have this love, has to get active, has to go into vessels. So here we go, Father, we're calling them in. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Keep going, Kathy. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So this is the gospel that's coming forth and the people to bring it. And these signs will follow those who believe. Now, this is an active church, Father. This is where we must go. And we have to be obedient. We have to because you're going to lead us right to this glory where we depend totally upon your grace, upon your power, upon your damn. He's going to put you in tough situations. As soon as you step into him, the grace will be there. Hallelujah. It's going to be something else, man. He's going to build this church quickly. He's going to have his people. They've been waiting for the training. They've been waiting for the love. They've been waiting for the acceptance. Hallelujah. Father, these signs will cast out demons, number one. Very few churches even attempt it. We're going to cast them out. New Song Worship Center will be a place that God will bring people to get set free. Hallelujah. Cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues, meaning they're filled with the Holy Spirit. They will take up serpents or anything that might be poisonous or anything that comes against them. As Luke said, they will not be harmed. In Jesus' name, and by no means, and they will lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This is the power of the church. Go ahead, Kathy. Father, I pray this. I thank you for the people you've prepared. Hallelujah. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up to heaven, sat down at the right hand of God, and they went out and preached everywhere. We're going to be a hub that sends people out everywhere. Father, we thank you that we do not get under any form of control, that we hear clearly how to raise up the people that were led by your spirit. In Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. And that you will confirm the words that they speak through the accompanying signs. So the Lord is going to confirm his church. Father, we thank you for this. In Jesus' name. Matthew, if you would, Kathy. Father, I lift up Matthew to you. He was a sign in Jesus' ministry. Matthew 10, 1, and then 7 and 8. Hallelujah. Father, we pray this. We intercede with this. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power. He's going to give us power in Costa Mesa. Power. He gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Hallelujah. Father, no more time for the gospel without power. Seven, Matthew 7, I mean, excuse me, 10, 7. And as you go, he's going to say this, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, of course, back then it was at hand. Now it's here. The people need to see the power. Not the words, but the power. And God is trusting this church. He's trusting you. So we're ordering it in. We're calling in the vessels to receive the glory. Not just us, but all the ones that have been waiting for his touch. Father, bring them from other states. I heard that in my spirit. Bring them outside the area. We've sowed outside the area. Bring the harvest. Send them to us. Send gifts of training. Send gifts of laying on of hands. Send gifts of faith. Send unique gifts to our new church location, new song, Freedom. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Shaman, now, you guys get anything in your heart to call in? You call it in. Hang on, I'm almost done, Tom. Let me get the scriptures out, and you can go at it. <laughs> I wouldn't let you not come up here, bro. You're going to get it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Seven, that was seven or that was eight? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you've received, freely give. So Jesus, before a sacrificial gift to the world, his death, burial, and resurrection, he gave a sampling with his disciples of what the gospel looked like. Hallelujah. 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 Families, Father. Prodigals, Father. Opportunities, Father. Faith, Father. Confidence. Breakthrough. Sanahayana. Miracles. Hamasanakata. Kathy, if you would, send us to Matthew. 3, 17 through 4, 10. I'm not going to go all that way, but. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you in Jesus' name. We're outlining. We're coming in agreement. We're calling it in. It is finished. Finally, a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then what did he, what did, what did the Lord, what did God do right after that statement? <clears throat> Filled him with the Holy Spirit out of the Jordan. The dove came down. He didn't have a party. What did he do? 4-1, Kathy. The Holy Spirit led Jesus. Guys, this is where we're going. <laughs> he led Jesus by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Father, this is so cool. 
He's going to take you, face fears, face things by his grace, complete miracles. You're prepared to do it. The Holy Spirit will let you know it's him. And he's going to take you to your enemy. You're not going to go around your enemy. You're not going to go over your enemy. You're going to go right through your enemy. And you've been prepared. But God will not leave you alone. He will not allow you to just make that decision yourself. You're going to wind up in situations. I know it's knee-shaking time, but you do. Sometimes you find up in a situation where you didn't get yourself there. You're just there. And God has to get you out. And he shows up and does a way out that you never thought about. So, Father, we come in obedience. Come in. Father, we thank you. We don't look at our age. We don't look at common down. We don't look about... I'm finished. Nobody is finished your glory. Last week, you called down the glory. Give us the grace and the ability to be humble in the presence of your leadership because you're beloved sons and daughters are being obedient. He's going to lead you to things you never believed you could do. Amen. Father, we thank you that we've been tested. We've moved from the testing into the glory. We've moved. The tents have been reestablished in the promised land, Lord, and we're going to be obedient to follow you to the glory, to the people, to the breakthrough, to the healings. We take authority over cancer. We take authority over disease. We take authority over poverty. We operate in finances. We call them in. Hallelujah. Father, we call obedience, 1 Peter 1, 2. We call obedience. We were born again, Peter said, for obedience and the sprinkling of the blood, the miracles. God said, follow me, and you will. You will. Fear will not get in your way anymore. Arguments, rebellion, stubbornness, no longer. You've already passed the test. You've already called out. And God will not fail you. He will come and tell you, bow the knee. He's not going to punish. He's not going to beat. You're going to want to. You're going to see his glory. You're going to see your dreams, Father. Everyone's dreams in here. Every deep thing. We loose it into our hearts. Bamba sakata. Kathy, wrapping it up here. First... Corinthians 4, 18 through 20. And my son, Father, I continue to pray into this. Everybody still okay? My son, Kanda. Still, still praying into this, announcing, coming in agreement. I cannot tell you what it's going to be like. It's going to be so simple. It's going to be so amazing. And my son, Kanda. Freedom, fullness. This was Paul talking to the Corinthian church, leaders of the Corinthian church, and he identifies the gospel. This is where new song is going. Now, some are puffed up as though I were not coming to you, he wrote, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord wills, and I will know not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Father, we call that. The world needs a witness of your glory. They don't need more words. They don't need more opinions. They don't need more scripture. They need the power of God. Everyone in here has been tested God said, I've tested this church. Many, I don't know who they are, could not pass the test. I don't know who did or didn't. And not everybody that left was left because of that. But many were tested as to what it takes to stand for the glory. My complete freedom 
Father, that's what we want. We don't want to be puffed up. We don't want to look good. We want to see lives changed. We want to see right mind anointings. We want to see Damascus Road experiences. We want to see the glory of deliverance. We want to see the power of the blood demonstrated to a lost and dying generation. Mamosaka. You don't have to find it. You don't have to be a legalist. You do not have to do a thing, but be willing to follow the Holy Spirit and allow him to show off. And not worry ever about what you did to get him to move or feel anything. You just know you're loved and you're forgiven and there is no sin and I'm going to accept it. And I know to give in. I know to lay my life down for him. And our church is going to have that flowing. And there's going to be people showing up in this new church, showing up that are not normal in the sense of what you think a church guy looks like or gal. But they're going to come in and the whole church is going to know what to do as the Holy Spirit deals with us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Finally, two quick ones. Colossians 2.15 Sabatata Amo kushuto sekia unda la bete sukia unda la robakaya. Lohom, 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 lohom bahai. Hana hai bea. Hamahi baya ya yabo kadaya. Nya no ho na hai. My heart, my heart, my heart coming through you. My heart. Your heart and my heart in perfect unison. Wherever I am in agreement, there I am. It's with my heart, not with my mind. It's with my heart. I'm on by the chest is of the heart. Come on, tongues, guys. Let's so mahande o o shitande. Ha! Hanye kade sakaru. Amal kamahande yomanya mi you. Unity in the church. Unity in the in the family church. Unity in grace. Sunda ha da da ka da 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 da. Your heart's crying out. Your heart's crying out. Your heart's crying out. Deliverance is coming. Cromandese. Your heart. Let go of your pain. Let go of your worry. Let go of your failure. It's not in my arms. I'm looking at your heart. I'm looking at your hunger. I'm looking at it's time. It's time. It's time. I picked you. You're perfect in my sight. The world needs to know your story. Do it again, testimonies. Do it again, Father. Do it again. Covenant promises, Lord. Father, I want to thank you, Jesus, that you did the heavy lifting. You disarmed all principalities and powers. You made a public spectacle of them. You defeated the devil at the cross. There is no more life in him. He's been destroyed. Deception is broken. Life and religion, it's not left up to us, church. No more. God isn't going to allow it. He's going to do it. Sunday Haya is going to do it. 
Say, I'm willing to be taught by the Holy Spirit. I'm willing. I'm willing, Father, you will send those that hear the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Has anybody got anything now? Hallelujah. Okay, Tom, you have something? Come on, Shantamandama. I thank you, God. I wasn't even thinking about coming. But I thank you, God. If I could just say one thing quick, that now that we're here, he's going to build. And we're going to be knit together. And we're going up because we have humbled ourselves and we've seen favor in God's eyes. And he said... In 1 Samuel 16, 7, that it's not the height or the stature or the appearance, but it's the heart. And I'm praying in Jesus' name for the people that are coming, the ones that have green, the ones that have purple hair, and the ones that are a bit on the cocky that God's going to have hold of. And we won't have to worry about the power because they're going to have the fire. And God, when, you, when they have the fire and they have the Holy Ghost with that fire, because when the cockiness, they're going to come against the proud, that, and the proud's going to have to bow because that cockiness and the love of God in them that we gave to them saying, hey, you're accepted. Because God picked you, and he loves you. And I thank God for them. I do in Jesus' name. I pray for them. And that we're going to say, you're accepted here. You're accepted in the beloved. Because they're going to be those young warriors and just like First John 3, 8, the work that I did, you're also going to do. And greater works will you do. And they're not going to have that fear because they're going to have that pride in reverse. God's going to heal that broken heart. He's going to heal it. And they're going to turn around with that fire of God. And they're going to say, when somebody tells them, you can't do it, they say, I don't listen. Because they're going to have the fire of God to be that bold and say, I'm doing it. I don't care what you think because my king of kings told me that I can. And there's no fear in that. Because, and by the way, people, fear is of the devil, you know. The only fear is to depart from evil. You know, the spirits are subject onto us. And if the spirit of fear is a fear of the devil, they have to be subject onto us anyway. So let's not be afraid in the name of Jesus. Let's move out with the boldness. First Timothy 1, 7, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. So are, why are we being intimidated when we were called to do these things? Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. We are not of the world. We're a power behind the Holy Ghost. And I pray, God, in Jesus' name, we're talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I pray that the other thing about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, there's another thing over it, and that is the fire of God, the fire of God that burns out the stuff that's not of God, the baptism of fire, and I pray in Jesus' name for everybody listening, and the people coming that, oh, I see it, that they're going to come with that baptism of fire, and they're going to go into the colleges, they're going to go into the high schools, they're going to go into the elementary schools because we weren't able to do it, but they can, and they're going to have such a fire coming. And I pray to God in Jesus' name for us that we do not break their spirit just because they're different and they have that pride of the world. Let in Jesus' name, I pray that the pride of the world turn into the fire of God and the spirit with power on them. And I tell you, when you get a hold and you reverse that pride and you turn it in the fire and the enemy tries to come and say, hey, what are you doing? He says, hey, in the name of Jesus, I'm doing what you are not supposed to because I come under the king of kings and I'm a king, I'm a queen. And no song, you're not picking on anymore because we're here. And I thank you, God. We're going to love them, and we're just going to let them do what's in their heart to do as they're healed from their brokenness and as they cry because they said, I don't fit in, you know, and I'm angry. I thank you, God, in Jesus' name. We're going to, team, we're going to turn that anger and that hurt 
into power. And when they grab a hold and the people that are coming against them and the, the ones where we were hard to do, they're going to say, who are you? I got the fire God. I know who I am. I don't care if I have green and black hair. I don't care if I have green and purple hair. I don't care if I have a nose ring. I don't care. Everybody's been telling me I don't fit in. And I'm saying in Jesus' name, you guys, come. Because here you will fit in in the name of Jesus. You will. You will fit in. You're accepted in the beloved just as you are. Free to be. Free to come just as you are. And be free to grow. And we love you. And you're free to be loved. You're free to come and kneel and cry before any of us. And with kindness, love, and mercy. We'll build you up. Oh, and I thank you, God, in Jesus' name for that day when they're fully built up and we use that young army to bring the heathen to their inheritance because God said in his word that where I was all things unto all men, that they may be saved. And because they're different, they're going to reach out to those people and we're going to see the heathen healed for our inheritance. And so, God, in Jesus' name, let us... Be open in our hearts to be lifted up because we are humble and God approved of our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Oh, Father, 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 I come right now. There's dreams in every one of us. There are things that we are birthing right now. Beyond anything you can hope, think, or ask. Ephesians 3.20, from the Holy Spirit. You're not going to understand my power of grace, my understanding of loving you through eternity, my understanding that I will never talk to you about past, present, or future sin. I will never do it. I've called you to love people. It's inside of you. And I'm calling and interceding right now, Father, and praying in the Holy Spirit for the power of your grace to just explode because it's your Spirit speaking through of us that brings us the strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and we will walk in joy and freedom no matter what this world has provided. I intercede for our families. I intercede for miracles. I intercede for the breakthrough in your lives. I command, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, that you will wipe our consciences clean because you did it at the cross, that you will bring that revelation, that Damascus Road experience in every one of our lives, that you are going to touch us in such a way that all we can do is give Jesus the glorious presence because of his goodness and his mercy that endures forever. If we've cried out for it, we have done all we know to do, and you are moving far beyond anything that I've been able to present today of victory over this city, over this glory, over your families. Ha, ma, ha, ha. Nothing that you think that will not be done. Prodigals will be jumping for joy. Families will be put back together. The glory. You will have leadership. You will just look at people and they will be free. You will walk in the joy of the Lord. You will walk and know that I am good for the promises I've given you. Hi. And you don't have to worry about it. It's done. It's done. And no shut out, it's a freedom, it's a glory, it's praise. You will dance the rest of your existence. You will dance before the Lord. You will know him as you know anyone. We have taken authority, Father. You have rid this place. You've rid this nation. You are ridding this world of religious spirits, antichrist spirits, darkness. You are wiping it out according to your plan. You are raising up your church throughout. Son, now you know this in your heart. Rejoice in your heart tonight. Rejoice at where you're going. Rejoice that the victory is yours. Rejoice that he's going to lead you into places that you did not know to go, but with great joy, great peace, great goodness. The war is over. Some, it is finished. 
The world has cried out to know me in the power of my resurrection. Some might say in your heart, Lord, you have lordship over me. I am obedient. I am walking. Every dream, every dream, complete healing, nothing wrong, nothing's ever too hard for you, nothing's impossible with you, God, and it's no longer just words, it's happening. With every step you possess the land. No more questioning, no more suggesting. I am here to prove. I raised you up. I'm responsible for you. I love you. And you will know that in this walk and in this land. The world will come to you as a light. You can take this beyond anything you can hope, think, or ask. So everything you think he might do that you would rejoice at, triple it, quadruple it, because it's over and above whatever you can think of. And he can't do that with your dreams. He has to do it with his dreams. And he will. And he will do it in new song as a gathering place of his army and his love and his outreach as a rejoicing reward for your faithfulness and your goodness and your stand and your prayer. Because he's good. He's all good. He's 100% good. Even the battles, even the judgments that are coming is good. The Holy Spirit knows that it has to be good to free us. He knows exactly. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You can trust me. We will know him in the power of his resurrection. Father, we thank you for the prayers of Paul. He cried out through the centuries that we would know the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, Father. And that's being released. Ha ha, saka. You cannot fail. The Holy Spirit is telling you, you cannot miss this. Hallelujah. You cannot miss this. Unless you deliberately put your foot down and say, I know what you have for me, Lord, and I don't want it. You cannot miss this. Hallelujah. I just want to touch on a couple of things. Last week, uh, Pastor Michelle uh, exploded heaven talking about the glory of God. And I was going through looking at all these different definitions. There's only a couple million about what the glory is. But this is the one that stuck out to me. It says, what does it mean God made us for his glory? We are created in God's image to give him glory. This simply means that the good people, the, 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 let me try that again. This simply means that the good that people may see in us, in our conduct, and our work and our accomplishments is designed to point to the grace, mercy, and lordship of God, who is truly the one working in our lives. I want you to that last part, the one working in our lives. God doesn't care if you get up here and quote scripture, if you go out in the street and get in someone's face and quote scripture. People don't care about that. They want, they want you to Tell them that someone loves them, that someone cares about them, that someone died for them, and someone rose out of the grave for them. That's what they want. And I agree with Tom. Yeah, they're going to come in. We're going to get people of, of all types of persuasions, some that are totally vehemently against what we, what we believe and what we think should be right. But I think more important than that is that God is not 
just saying that they're going to come in. But God is calling us to go out. What I just read, that people want to see the love of God in us. So, Father, right now, everything that Richard said, Lord, there is no age in your calling. I, I think about Caleb. He was a fighter. He didn't give up. All through the Old Testament the, and the New Testament, Paul, he, he strove to the very end. Peter strove to the very end of, the, of, of a ripe old age. So many of the prophets of the Old Testament, God, they were old men. But God, they knew that they had a calling and they knew that you had a plan. What Richard was reading a while ago when as soon as Jesus received that calling and the permission from on high to go out and start doing what you're doing, first thing that happened is, hmm, God, your spirit led him into the wilderness. And what Richard was saying, we don't know where we're going to go, but we do know in Psalms 23 that God said that he's going to prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. God, we're going to be yelled at. <laughs> Lord, we're going to be scoffed at. People are going to make fun of us. But those same people are going to come back and say, can you tell me again about this Jesus? I'm sick. I'm dying. The doctor said that there's no hope. And God, we are going to go forth, God, and we're going to lay hands according to what you said to do. Not what we said, but what you said. Not in our path, God, but the path that you lead us to. And we're going to lay hands on the sick, and they will be well. We're going to hear people crying out, if you would come and pray for me, I know I'll be healed. That's a scary place to be, God, if we're not walking with you. But God, if we're walking with you, we know we can walk in confidence and we can go and we can lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. We know that when we're walking with you, Lord God, we can go to the demoniac and say, in the name of Jesus, come out and be set free. Lord, that's what you want us to do. Father God, you called us to be Christ-like. Jesus didn't sit around in a synagogue or in a temple, you know, twiddling his thumbs. He went out to the people. He went out to the people. He didn't say, come in. He didn't say, hey, come over here. They followed him because he was a leader. They followed him because they needed him. The people in this world, the people in our communities, the people in this city, the other churches, God, they need us. You've raised up New Song. You've raised up the people in this church for a purpose. And it's not just to sit here. It's not to build a big emphasis and say, wow, look at our church. Look how holy we are. God, it's to say, God, you are holy. We are holy because you're holy. That's what we want, God. That's the kind of church that you want. The one that would do what you say to do. And that, God, you're going to be glorified through us. God, that's what we want. That's what you want. And nothing is going to stop that. It's not a building. God, it's not a building. It's not even a city. It's people, people that need us. Oh, we used to sing a song called, People Need the Lord. Oh, God, we may be, and this may sound very cliche, but we may be the only Bible they ever read. We may be the only Christian that they've ever met. So we don't know who's going to cross our path. Like Tom said, they could have body piercing and color hair and smell like they haven't taken a bath in a month. Or they could be driving a Mercedes. 
They'd be driving their own private airplanes, living in fine mansions. Lord, show us how to reach those people. Show us how to be that love, Jesus, that they need when they need it. Oh, God. Oh, God. God, show us how to be what you want us to be to them, not to us. This isn't about a spotlight shining on us, God. This is about a spotlight shining on you. But, God, I know that when our spotlight shines on you, God, it's going to shine through us, God, because that's what you said, that we will do greater things than you. Oh, God, we can't, God. We can't unless we make that first step. Holy Spirit, tonight, I'm saying for, for me, and I, I, I hope everyone in here is saying it for them, for themselves, God, use us. Move us. Show us where to go. Show us what to speak. Give us your words. And God, let us, Father, you put us here for a reason. Let us change the world. Let us change people around us, our next door neighbors, the people at the supermarkets that's standing behind us or in front of us. Let them see the Jesus in us. That they would turn around and say, my little kid is sick. Can you lay hands on my little child? They need to be healed. Father, there is no limit to what you can do. And there's no limit to what your people can do when you lead us and when you guide us. And when we finally realize, God, that you are inside of us. That same power that raised Christ from the grave is in us. And I just want, Father God, for it to be ignited in a way, God, that I haven't had in a long time. In a way, Father God, that my hands may be made of flesh. But God, when your hand is on top of my hand, nothing is impossible. And I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Then I'll sit down, right? I want to pray strong, and I want you guys to pray with me. Because God said, it's not of yourself. At least you, you should boast. And God is moving on me. And you guys pray with me because... When Jesus said, I first loved you, he didn't ask for us to outlove him. And I just pray for everybody here and all churches that we break that unworthiness or whatever you guys get so that we could let go and keep trying to prove to God, I'm worthy of you. I break that in the name of Jesus right now. Amen. Samate shete kata the Lord spoke to my heart. I want you to know, and we're learning this. Scripture says that not to fear if you're called before the synagogue to try to figure out what to pray or what to ask, that at that time the words will be given to you. He is teaching you right now and talking to you about faith. Faith isn't in your knowledge. Faith isn't in your head. If you've already qualified, you already belong to him. So he's walking you, taking you by hand. He's going to put you in situations, and then he's going to unction you, and you're going to realize that you're going to bypass this, and you're going to say something. And as soon as you step in to say it, the anointing is. And we all know this experience. We have been told by religious spirits that we have to be perfect, that we have to do scriptures, that we have to pray ourselves up, and so we spend all of our time trying to get in the mood to minister to somebody when God said, you're already there. And I will not let you go because my glory is in my obedience. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example of that because God brought it back to me. It's amazing. In the ministry many years ago, 
I was in a completely different church and my wife and we were a team and we were ministering to a pastor from another country. And the pastor was a great guy, was appreciated at the church we were at, he and his wife. And something got into the area of forgiveness or something. And he hit the floor and I went down to pray over him and he turned and spit in my face. And immediately, I felt this anger real quick, like two seconds, just, oh, I just wanted to, and then all of a sudden it left me and the peace of God hit and laughter and joy and peace. And the Lord told me to share that with you because as you come in conflict, so many times we worry because if we watch this stuff on TV, we want to wring their necks. I mean, how can I ever walk in love to that? It's because it isn't you. He'll send you right in front of that person and then that anointing will reach out and you're Jesus. The key is, and what he's doing with you is he's getting you to allow him and trust in him to get in front of the person. And that unction is going to get stronger and stronger out of love, not obligation. The Spirit of God is love, gentleness, kindness, goodness, grace, not obligation. But he's going to lead you right there, and he's going to say, just open your mouth, and the power of his grace is going to hit. And he turns evil into good. So hallelujah. So Father, I want to thank you again as you keep telling me to tell the church and myself and all of us that they're already there. There's nothing more you have to do. You're going to hear my small still voice louder and louder. And when you feel that love and you feel that goodness, for it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance, then you're going to want the word, you're going to want to know him better, you're going to be coming from a good heart and not trying to do something to get better, which is the difference between works and grace. The Holy Spirit leads you in the knowledge and worship and praise because the Holy Spirit knows how to praise the Father. So, Father, we thank you for what you're doing tonight. It's my cry, it's New Song's cry, that we realize how loved we are, that we realize that you have taken us to this spot, and you will not drop us, you will not leave us alone, you will not say anything that I can't use you in any way, and that we're taking this love to the world. We appreciate it in Jesus' name. Anybody? I'm going to borrow your seat for a minute here. Father, you just laid upon my heart so much right now to call in. Call in those who want to know you, who want to really know you. They want to know your heart. They want to feel that, that love that you have for them. They want to see the kingdom of God within them. That is your kingdom, your kingdom within us, Father. They want to know you. I'm calling them in, Father. I'm calling them in to know your heart, to know your heart. I'm calling in not just, it, it's like, Father, the Spirit of God known in such a way as never as maybe some of us haven't but calling in those people father who hunger for you who hunger to know you who are submitted they're surrendered to you father they walk in a, a in a in a place where it's it's not it's not what you can do for them. It's what they can know of you. What they can do is they walk in you where the kingdom of God within is full and realize, Father, this is your glory. Your glory is your people.
They hunger for you. I hunger for your heart. I hunger for your wisdom. I hunger for your word. But I hunger, Father, for that which is you deposited in me to come to maturity, to know you, to walk with you, to be an instrument of your glory and your glory only. I'm calling them in, Lord. I'm calling them in. I can feel their hearts. They're just saying, God, there's more. There's more. There's something more. There's something I have to know. And I have to know you. Those who walked with you, Father, walked in great exploits. I'm not looking for the exploits. I'm expecting them, but I'm not looking for them. To know you. To know you. To surrender completely to you. And Father, for those who have gone through so much to come in and know your goodness, to know your grace, to feel your love and be transformed into incredibly powerful instruments for the kingdom of God, for that which you are about to do, that which you are bringing forth in the body of Christ, in unity, in love that touches cities, that touches nations, that touches families, the miracles, the signs and wonders, Father, not saying God, I need them. I'm saying I need you. I want to be an instrument of God. I want to be one who has the heart of God to love. I want to know the grace of God even more and be an instrument of it to everyone around me where your presence is evident, where your glory is known and you get people know you because of it. Not know us, know you. Like Paul like Paul, who would go wherever you went, and in prison he would sing. And in the, with the church he would rejoice. His joy was continual because he knew you. He walked with you. He followed you. He was transformed by you, and I'm calling them in, Father. There's many. There's many. There's many. I feel them. I see them. There's many who don't want to play church anymore. They want to know you, Lord. They want to know Jesus. They want to be led by the Spirit of God. They want to encounter the relationship with the Father of God who loved them so much that he sent his son to die for them. What's the fullness of that? You died for us for a purpose. You died to put the kingdom within us. You died for us to walk out that kingdom, not our way, but your way absolute surrender and they've been looking for you they've been looking for a place that just wants to know God and do his will and see his kingdom and see his glory I'm calling them in Lord touch their hearts touch my heart I want nothing but you nothing but you It's your glory. It's your kingdom. It's in me. You do what you want with it. You do what you want with me. There is, that's surrender. You do it. You walk it. You lead the path. But your glory, your kingdom, your power, you will unction. You will change me if you need to. You will lead me and guide me and teach me. And there's so many out there that this is what they want. They want to know you. They want to know you and do what you created them to be and to do every day to come closer. I'm calling them in. I'm calling them in. These are the reformers, the transformers. These are the ones that hunger, that they have a heart of your heart of love, which will touch so many people. Some of them are already here, but I'm calling them in, Father to come together, not for what God can do for us, to come together what God can do through us. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Shakande. Mic's open. Anybody got anything? Come on. Bamba sada. Bambushane manda. I think about um, four or five months ago, um, Dave and myself and a number of you uh, were 
well, I don't know exactly who it was exactly, but we went to a church called OC. <laughs> and uh, I got there a few minutes early. And when I came through the door, there was like fifth, maybe 10 or 15 of the people just got around me and started praying for me right away. It was amazing. I was like blown away. And I just wanted to share that because, um, yeah, they had a lot of love. And if you're watching this online, Praise the Lord, I didn't forget about it, but it's, it's, that's a wonderful thing. And I just um, wanted to mention that because it just, it blessed me just by walking in the door. I didn't know any of these guys and they were uh, a variety of different ages and all different kinds of things. Maybe some uh, that looked like um, they were maybe riding motorcycles or something. I don't know exactly what, but they, they were different than myself, but basically, uh, yeah, they just, came on me and just started praying and then uh, it was great. So I wanted to mention that. Um, and then I wanted to also, as we're praying, I felt um, there, were, there's, there were times like when I'm in stores um, or just out and about when um, I'll get a, a discernment about something or someone that um, is around me or whatever. Um, it, it's not good. So I wanted to pray about that too um, for the church and uh, you know, discernment of spirits. And then uh, the other thing that was coming to me to pray for was um, the families, the fathers, the mothers, sons and daughters around the country. And, um, and then the last thing about getting away and spending time uh, when you began reading the scripture about uh, Jesus, he was baptized and then he went out into the wilderness and he spent time. And then there was times when he'd have to get away. So that was coming to me as well. So I wanted to pray about all those different things. So Father God, we just thank you for the scripture that you have in our hearts, that Jesus lives in us and that we know probably so many things about your word that we could be very, well, I don't know how to say this, but basically we know about you, you live in us, and we need to continue to do the work that you call each of us to do. Lord, I pray for just your anointing. I pray for the Holy Spirit to continue to fire us up, to um, have that love that transforms and it's different then people will feel that when we go to speak to them about you, Lord. It just won't be a bunch of words and knowledge, but it will be a spiritual hunger that they're looking for in, a, in a, something that they really need in their life, and that's Jesus. And Father God, I just pray for um, discernment of spirits that you would give each person here and online um, discernment, discernment about the day in which we live, about, you know, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, you know, going right, going left, just making basic decisions, doing the right thing, the things that you call us to do, Lord. We would have discernment of the stuff that's around us. We're, there's a lot of distractions in our world. There's, a, there's confusion everywhere we look. There's a lot of confusion. But we know that you are the light. You have given us the light. Jesus is the light of the world. And I pray for the families, fathers, mothers, sons and daughters. I pray for uh, healing of homes. I pray for prodigals to come back. And I pray for um, just restoration of the breach that's been done in homes. Lord, I mean, like we can see homes that have termites and they, the walls need to be breached. The walls have been breached. And they need to be repaired. So, God, we pray for just the repair of homes. And the fathers be fathers, the mothers be mothers. And uh, there be healing, healing in the families, Lord. And I pray for um, the church that we would be able to... Uh, we're so distracted by our, our phones, our TVs, and our radios, and the environment in which we live. Lord, we need to, to take that time to, do, if it means just getting away for 
to be quiet, just to be quiet, to hear your voice. Your sheep hear your voice. Your sheep know your voice. So we give us ears to hear and eyes to see and uh, continue to heal our hearts, Lord, and help us to, to uh, hear what you have to say to us. I pray for dreams. I pray for um, the revelation of Jesus to continue to come into uh, people's hearts. And um, a Saul kind of experience where he uh, is knocked down and just a, the revelation of Jesus comes to him. So we pray for um, those things to take place and we thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for uh, this night in Jesus' name. Thank you. Jesus. Psalm 122 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, Peace within you, because of the house of the Lord your God, I will seek your good. And I'm bringing that up because there's reports coming in that Israel has now launched attacks against Syria, Iran, and Iraq. <clears throat> and so I just feel we need to invoke the angels, release them, commission them for divine protection. All of this is, of course, escalated since October 7th. And... Um, and then recently, 300-plus uh, rockets launched at Israel, uh, planes, uh, what do you call them, drones and, and rockets against them, 99% of which were taken down. Um, and I think only one person was injured, from what I understand. And just, uh, just yesterday, 50 more Rockets were launched against him. So it, does, it hasn't stopped. It's continuing against Israel. And so now they are, if you will, retaliating or defending themselves. And I'm sure it's very targeted. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we are praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. We're praying for protection, Father, that you would cover them supernaturally and divinely. Lord, they're just such a small, small nation, small, small people uh, in, in size. Um, they have a lot there, but supernaturally you have been with them and, and much larger nations have come against them. And, and over and over, wonderfully supernaturally, you have kept them and protected them. And I, I'm not, um, I'm not uh, ignorant, and I understand that there's been things that, you know, even Israel has done. They haven't done everything perfect or right, and yet they are your people. They are God's people, the apple of your eye. And so, Father, we're, we're praying for them right now. I thank you that the hosts of heaven, the angels, would be released sent, uh, moving now on their behalf to, to stand at ready, to stand at guard, to defend and to protect the land and the people. And, and no matter what, ju just like David said, the enemies have mounted all around me. But it doesn't matter because God is with me. I thank you, Lord. Nevertheless, God protects me. God oversees me. God watches over me. I thank you for that, Lord, that you continue to protect them and keep them. Uh, that, that there are those who are chanting and announcing right here in this country, death to Israel and death to America.
And I just rebuke those word curses right now. I pull them down, every one of them. In their ignorance, they speak it. In their demonic possession, they speak it. In their lack of understanding or even, I'll say, stupidity, they speak it. They're not in their right mind, even uh, even insane in their thinking to to want to destroy and um, and to kill righteous people, the the people of God. And it's not just Israel under attack, but the Christians are under attack all over the world and in America. It has risen. It is rising. Uh, this sentiment, this this feeling, this push back against Christians. Uh, they're calling Christian nationalists now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you that we are protected not only naturally but supernaturally. Our defense comes from the Lord. You are our shield, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you surround us like a shield and you uphold us and you keep us. Father, we're not just sitting here as ducks ready to be taken out, Lord, but our God defends us. And our God watches over us. I thank you for that. And the power that is assigned to each one of us. And the power that is assigned to the church and the body of Christ right now. All over the world. Thank you, Lord, that the angels uh, move in kind. They move in the same light and in the same understanding to protect and keep the people of God and the body of Christ in this hour. And Lord, uh, we're not hidden lights, we're not under bushels, but we are lights, we're, we're a city set on a hill. I thank you, Father, that our light is shining brightly, and it also is dispelling the darkness and breaking through the darkness and destroying it and causing it to fail. Every word that rises up against us in judgment shall be found to be in the wrong according to your word. And every judgment that is formed against us, every weapon that would try to be formed against us fails and falls apart and loses all credibility in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that not only are we surrounded and a, a shield, the body and Israel and the people of God, but Lord, you are defending our reputation as well because our reputation is your reputation, Father. We are your sons and your daughters. And I thank you, Lord, and I just want to remind you in covenant that you are the one who declared us righteous. And I thank you, Father, that that righteousness stands and is not defeated and is not taken for granted. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the, the move of the Spirit in this hour. And, Father, I thank you that it's not just, um, it's not just in word. It's not just in deed, but it is in power like we've been praying tonight. The glory of God and the power of God. The might of God. The spirit and power. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And that is another thing that the name of Jesus carries power and weight. The name of Jesus is above every name. We decree it, we proclaim it tonight. And we stand with that name. Thank you, Father. In the spirit, Lord, we're not passive. We're not sitting uh, without any strength or weak. We are full of life. We are full of power. We are full of the anointing. We are full of the word of the Lord power and demonstration and the unction of God is working in us and through us and we shall see the glory of God in the earth. We'll see it for Israel. We'll see it for the church. We'll see it in the states. We'll see it in the cities. We'll see it in California in Jesus' name. 
the power of God is working not only in us and through us, but around us, all around us, and it's being known. It's being felt, and people's lives are changing and being touched. Lord, I decree it. I proclaim it. It's not just something we're praying tonight. It's not just something we're hoping for tonight. We know it is taking place right now. Lives are being touched and changed. The name of Jesus is famous. The name of Jesus carries life. The name of Jesus transforms. Just like Paul said, uh, disciples said, through that name, through faith in that name, these were healed, these were delivered, these were set free, these were changed. Thank you, Lord. We stand tonight and we shall see the glory of God for Israel. In Jesus' name. Boom, boom. Father God, I just want to remind you that uh, Babylon came against your people. And God, uh, you protected your people. Babylon now is Iraq. Persia, the Persian Empire came against your people and you protected them. And that's Iran. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that, uh, that we can pray with such assurance and such confidence. Even as Pastor said a while ago, Lord, to send forth your angels, to command them, to en totally encompass Israel. The same way that the mountain ranges encompass Jerusalem. Lord, I thank you, Lord God. Lord, we, several weeks ago, we talked about, and I don't remember what that word was, about do it again. You did it once, God. You can do it again. Testimony. There you go. This is going to be a time of Israel's testimony. Lord God, you said to speak things that are not as though they were. God, that's what I'm doing. That's your word, God. It's not my word. It's your word. And I thank you for that, Lord God. Because Israel is your people. We are your people, and we stand with them. Father God, I thank you that the United States of America, Lord God, that you established through the same Judean principles, Father God, that's in your word, God. This nation was established. This nation said that Israel is our ally, and we will stand with them. Lord God, right now, I pray, Lord God, that there are millions of people across this country, across the United States, that are on their knees and on their face before you, Lord God, lifting up Israel. And I thank you for that, Lord God, because in the, in the grand scheme of things, Father God, you have a plan. And Lord God, that plan is going to come to fruition. And the devil and all the demons in hell cannot stop it. And I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Father, I join this in Jesus' name. Jesus, you are our wisdom. You are our sanctification, redemption, and righteousness. But you are our wisdom. Father, I want to thank you for making this count. That this not be a waste of manpower and machinery that you're guiding greatness. I lift up our country and that you turn the American people and awaken them to righteousness that they not sin, that you would strike the fear of the Lord into their hearts of them waking up, that you would send uh, ministering spirits and angelic forces throughout to knock on the door of leadership and those that are on the fence. We command demonic power to bot its knee. We command those spirits that are trying to bring the United States and Israel apart 
apart. We break that assignment. We speak to it in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood. We as Christian brothers bring and loose the revelation of brotherhood and grace and the Jewish people. Wake up, Jewish people. Wake up. By the power of your spirit, what the devil intended for evil, punish him, break his control, turn it, reset it, boomerang, the prophet said boomerang, whatever the devil does, loose confusion in his forces, and, and like an arrow strikes, Father, that your will be done in this attack that you will bring all hidden things to light that you need to destroy or you need to deal with. And Father, I just specifically say, this is my heart, this is, we don't speak to war in the sense of religiosity. If it's strong enough to go to war, it's strong enough to win. In Jesus' name, Father, and that this not be just another attempt I rebuke that from our government. I rebuke the attempt to have a permanent ceasefire so they can continue doing what they want to do. And Father, in the name of Jesus, strengthen Prime Minister Netanyahu, who is your prophet and your man of Israel. Strengthen him with might by your spirit in his inner man. You strengthen him, Lord, and you give him wisdom and bring about counsel around him. Not in numbers, Lord, but in heart. In heart that knows you and great courage, supernatural courage. Courage from you, not man. Courage to stand as a prophet of the living God for this nation and wisdom on how to deal and how to break this assignment and how to every assignment of the devil is bound in Jesus' name. Raise up your intercessors, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Those that are appointed to stand in the gap on a continuous basis for Israel and that they would be strengthened and they would be wise and they would hear the voice of the Spirit of the living God. Yes. We take the blood of Jesus. We love you, Israel. Yes. We love the Jewish people. We love you, God, because you love you and you chose the Jewish people and there will be no death to Jerusalem or any Israeli nation. We know that. But we've put up, Lord. They've put up with enough. You've put up with enough. It is time. There's a connection between us. There's something going on in the spirit about our nation getting free in this. I don't know exactly what it is, but I pray for it because it's your will. You're doing something, not just in Israel and not just in this war. You're doing something here. And not just to uncover, Lord, but to deal with. I heard that in Dave's prayer. I heard that here. No more playing around. We don't play with the devil anymore. You're not stealing people anymore. And when you deserve death, you get death. I know that shakes everybody up, but Ananias and Sapphira is an example. Paul struck a proconsul blind. God is loosing his goodness and his power to protect his family and to protect those that don't know him that are being stolen because of cowardice and because of stupidity and deception, and we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Yes. Christians are righteous. Yes. They stand up for truth with courage. Yes. And they're not afraid to call for truth. Yes. Thank you, Compromise is bound. Double-mindedness is bound. Politics and religion is bound. We call them down. We desire love. We desire truth. We desire peace. But this nation was built on peace through strength. And anybody who's a fool enough to think you can be weak and have peace is a fool. And we're not going to be run by fools any longer. 
We call them down and exposed and break them. Yeah. Father, there's something going on with the administration in this situation. Cause your will to be done. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Come on up, Sharon. You want me to bring it back? Hallelujah. You, got, you want me to hold the mic for you? you can no, do both. I, can hold, I can hold it. The border's been on my heart. And um, I don't know, I just felt like God was speaking to me tonight because what the enemy meant for evil, God is meaning for good. And uh, I was listening to Dutch Sheets the other night, Tom and I, where when they first hit our soil, um, the people that came, they dedicated our nation to Jesus Christ and that the gospel would go out to all the world. And we can look at the borders as being a negative, but we can also look at it as being a positive because the world is coming to us. We haven't had enough people to go out to the world. So God is bringing the world to us. So we just thank you, Jesus, that the people that are coming in, Lord, those that have evil plans for this nation, we thank you that when they hit our borders in Jesus' mighty name, that the mighty angels of God will touch them and those plans that are in their heads and that are in their hearts will go in Jesus' name. That everyone that crosses the border in Jesus' name, they will be touched by the power of of God. We thank you that revival is going to start at our shores. Revival is going to start at the border. People are pouring over our borders. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we claim each and every person that steps their foot across the line of the United States of America will be saved. That every person that touches the border of our shores will be for you, Jesus, and will go into our nation and cause that revival that we are wanting to see. We thank you, Jesus, right now that you send people to the border, Lord, that that are full of your power and your glory so that as these people come in that they will be able to touch that those that speak different languages lord that are saved in our nation that you send them to the border so they can communicate with those that are coming in that don't know you jesus so they can be saved we thank you lord this plan this plan is your plan it's happening Lord, and we don't look at it as an evil plan. We don't look at it as a plan from the enemy. We laugh in his face because this is your plan for our nation, that the world shall be saved. And it is going to start at our borders. We claim that now in the name of Jesus. We declare it now in Jesus' mighty name that the borders, the people coming in into the borders will be saved saved in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. Fight over. I, I just thought, uh, well, that woman can preach. <laughs> uh, we need to pray for President Trump. Uh, the jury selection is being done. And I was looking at some of these clowns. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Probably should have called him a clown after she just showed. But they are. I mean, they're getting their information off of TikTok and off of Facebook and off of, you know, I don't know, what, coloring books or something. <clears throat> but all it takes is one person for a mistrial. So, Father God, Lord, let your will be done. Father God, we just cover him with the blood of Jesus. Lord, his attorneys. Lord, we ask you to give the judge and his defense attorney, right mind thinking. 
And Father God, let justice prevail in the name of Jesus. This kind of fits with both, but spinning off of what Sharon was saying, this is uh, 1 Corinthians 2. It says, we speak wisdom from those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Now listen to this. The hidden wisdom of God ordained before the ages of our, for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. When you were praying that, Sharon, I just kept thinking, if the Dems had known what they were doing by opening up the border, they never would have let the border wall be stopped. But I think God has a plan, you said that several times, that his wisdom is so much more above these coming into this great nation, which we have a covenant with God. And we, we look at it from the negative that, that oh man, they're all going to come and they're all going to vote Democratic or they're all going to vote and they're all going to, I think God is going to transform, Amen. change minds, uh, deliver people who are coming across, who are gang bangers or wh whoever else, you know. Uh, we, we're always talking about, because we hear it on the news, trafficking and drugs. And so it's all magnified, the horrible, the worst, the best. But we need to take into account the wisdom of God, who usurps all of that. And because the, the wisdom of the rulers of this age only know so much, but God sees the whole picture. And, and so we can say the word that God gave to me is backfire. It's all going to backfire. All their plans, all their schemes. And I don't want to be party to speaking the curse and speaking negative. I like what you were praying, and I want to I wanna hang on to that and say, in the name of Jesus, they're saved. They're going to be delivered. They're going to be set free. Their lives are going to be transformed in Jesus' name. Oh, <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Real quick, it's crazy. But in 1980, I mean, yeah, 1984, I've been a Christian four years. And the Lord, remember it was the Olympics in L.A. And I think it's the only vision I ever had in my life. I, it, I think it was half dream, half vision. It's the only one. But the Lord told me that very thing, that God, instead of praying for the nations, I'm bringing the nations to you. Wow. Well, anyway... I, I just did it, and I don't know how this happened, but um, this large group, JCs or somebody, got a hold of it. Uh, who was it? I can't remember. Anyway, I, it was a Christian group, big one. And uh, they got a hold of it about this vision, and, and they asked me about it, and I did it. And all of a sudden, I got connected to the Olympic Committee in L.A., and the Christian part of it and their whole program and spoke to 1,500 people at their annual to Christmas dinner telling them about this dream. I mean, God just opened the door, and I had forgotten all about it. And it was the very same concept. Pray that I bring the people and they get saved here. And so the whole outreach was geared to that. And so, hallelujah. But an example, guys of wisdom. See God? Boom. Just the opposite of what we would think. Boom. So Father, we thank. Anybody else with anything to pray? I don't want to cut anybody off. We'll take whatever time we need. Anybody else? Okay, Father. Well, let's lift our hands and point to the walls and, and thank you for this building, Father. Thank you for the reminding us to pray and stand that this will be known as a sanctuary of Jesus. This will be known as a place of grace, a place of goodness, an atmosphere of absolute joy, a place that you will turn what the devil intended for evil, that we had to fight head on head and many times in here, but we beat him through your blood. 
And now it's a place of joy and peace and safety and grace all up and down this whole territory, the airport, the blood over the airport, the blood of terrorism bound, everything of evil nuts not touch this place or this block or the churches in Costa Mesa. In Jesus' name, amen.